Hello again, it's good to be back with you. I'd like to talk today about impulse and momentum. Now, if you're like a lot of people, the first time you ever heard about impulse in the sense of moving something is that. Starship Enterprise, well, sort of. Anyway, impulse power Mr. Sulu, right? We've, we've heard about that. Well, it turns out that's maybe an okay place to start, but it's not a good place to finish. Impulse power is something uh, thought up by Gene Roddenberry, the guy who wrote the Star Trek uh, movies and the TV show. Um, it turns out there really is such a thing as impulse and there really is such a thing as momentum, but alas, they don't have a lot to do with this. So, sorry, but I got to erase the uh, Starship Enterprise. So here's where it comes from. This is about as, as fundamental as physical laws get, right? There's Newton's first law, F equals MA. So, M dV dT. A is just the uh, derivative of, acceler of velocity, right? Acceleration is the derivative of velocity, so there it is. Now, one of the, the little rules of calculus is that dV and that dT, those are just variables. We can push them around any way we want, just like you can any other variable. All right? We don't know what they are, but we know they're not zero. They're infinitesimally small, but they're not zero. So what we can do is I can multiply through by dT if I want. and I can get that, all right? I haven't violated any mathematical rule by getting there. Now, would you think to do this on your own? I don't know, maybe not. I'm not sure I ever would, but somebody did, and that's the, that's the point here. Well, uh, F times dt, dt being a little tiny uh, amount of time, this is impulse, okay? And we can look at impulse over a large time. Well, how do you do that? Well, you can do this. Okay, how do you get that dt to go away? Well, you integrate. That's the one property those variables have, have that makes them a little different than any other variable. So let's say if F and M are constant, okay, that is, they don't change, they're just numbers, they're not functions, okay, well, this becomes F dt, and this is m dv. Now, the left side of this equation, whether you look at it there or there, that's impulse. Okay, that's just a, a, a function, I guess, or a property that's defined. That's called impulse. And this is momentum. Okay? Impulse equals change in momentum. Sometimes people actually write that out on their paper, in, almost in words. Okay, I actually used to write that down on test papers and things just so I wouldn't forget. You could do worse. All right, so now that we've got this, what, what do you do with it? All right? Impulse equals change in momentum. If you know what the force is and you know how long it's acting, now you're going to know what the change in momentum is. Why would you want to know change in momentum? Well, if you don't know the mass, you can calculate the mass. If you don't know the change in velocity, you can calculate the change in velocity. All right? So let's try this, okay? I might even leave that up there. Well, let's say that Captain Kirk wants Mr. Sulu to go from basically idle, sitting around not doing, you know, just sort of orbiting a planet or something, maybe at the space dock, whatever that is, to 0.1 light speed. So it was Mr. Sulu, impulse power to 0.1 light speed. Well, is that a lot or a little? That's actually cranking right along. So my delta V equals 0.1 C. And I looked it up. Um, you really can go, you can go up to 0.25 light speed with impulse power in the Star Trek world. Um, two, there's a C, and so that's 0 0.1 times, uh, let me see if I get this right here, 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That is really, really, really fast, okay? So this is still really, really, really fast. 0.1 C is much, much faster than any, any object made by man has ever gone, all right? So that's pretty easy. That's 0.2, uh, 
Yeah. Let's try this one more time here. 2.998 times 10 to the seventh meters per second. Okay, so that's 0.1 light speed. That's our change in velocity. Now, I want to I want to find force. Okay. Well, in order to do that, I need to know the mass of the Starship Enterprise. So, I went out on the internet. Turns out there are websites out there devoted to this sort of thing. I don't know where these people get these, the, this information, and I don't know why they've chosen to do the, this with their lives, but th there it is. So it turns out the mass of the Starship Enterprise, and by the way, that's the original, NCC-1701. Just in case there's any, any Star Trek people out there, yeah, I get it. There's a whole bunch of different ones. The mass of, of NCC-1701, the original one from the, I don't know, TV show, I guess, is supposedly 550,000 metric tons. Okay, where they got this, who knows. Is that, is that a lot? Well, that's about the size of, the, of a really, really, really big super tanker. Okay, it's gargantuan. That is a huge amount of mass. Well, that turns out to be 550 million kilograms, because there's a thousand kilograms in a metric ton. Okay, so run through the numbers again. We had F dt, which is impulse, equals m d v. Oh, by the way, impulse power, Mr. Sulu, get us to point 0.1 c. How long? How long do I have? All right. We will assume that we they get there in 20 seconds. Okay. In the TV show, it never takes them that long. It's always almost instantaneous. But I'm going to. I'm going to try to keep this somewhat reasonable and say, well, it's 20 seconds to get to 0.1 light speed. So, take this expression where there's impulse on one side and momentum on the other. Okay. By the way, that looks an awful lot like what we started with, isn't it? That's basically Newton's law right there. So when you say impulse equals change in momentum, it's really just another way of stating Newton's law. All right, so we're going to get this just gargantuan amount of uh, mass. Divide that by 20 seconds. Okay, kilogram over seconds. Does that make sense? No, we got to get light speed in there. Okay, that's going to be 2.998 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Okay, so mass, delta V, delta T. Okay, so what do you get? Let me see if I can get down. I can get down one more, one more row here. Um, so I'm going to get a force. I'll try to write this big here. 8.244 times 10 to the 14th newtons. Well, is that a lot? 10 to the 14th? Yes, that's a lot. Okay, compare that to the biggest rocket we have ever made. The Saturn V, they started flying them when I was little. I was five or six, I guess. One of my first memories is watching the Apollo 11 moon landing, so you get an idea there. If you, the, there was five Saturn F1 engines on the thing and they made 1.5 million pounds of thrust each. They, apparently the Americans hadn't discovered the metric system yet. So a Saturn V rocket coming off the launch pad has a total thrust of 3.336 times 10 to the seventh newtons. Okay, so we're going to looking at about oh, around two times 10 to the seventh. This is 20 million times more thrust, more force than a Saturn V rocket can make. And this is just trying to go to point one C. There's no, we're, we're not talking about warp cores or anything like that yet. So, makes great sense in a movie or a TV show, I suppose. But there you have it. There's impulse and momentum. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper.